not sure what to bring to your next barbecue, try out some barbecue sugar cookies. My name is Cami Bird. I'm the creator of Ice Kitchen, and once a month I put together a beginner cookie decorating set and walk you through how to decorate it. This month we're doing barbecue cookies, and what's different about this set compared to others I have made in the past is we are doing icing transfers. So what you're going to do and what we're gonna walk through today is decorating just a flat cookie and then on some additional parchment paper or something, creating different icing shapes, different icing designs that you peel off and then using royal icing put on your cookie. Now these are much more of a two day affair so you can let everything completely dry. You can definitely do them in one day, but it's easier in two days. But the cool thing is once you put them on, they are secure. They are not going anywhere. And I put these on about an hour ago. <laughs> so we are good to go. Let's go through the steps of how to make the icing, how to decorate the cookies and follow along. You're going to start by mixing up all of your icing consistency and colors. And I like to use a one bowl method for this, where you use one bowl to mix all of your colors so you don't have to do a ton of dishes. So I start with the white and I just added a little bit of water. I usually start with a teaspoon or less depending on how much icing I'm mixing together and I'm mixing it until it kind of flows off the spatula really nicely which this um, camera angle does does not really show you at all and so we do it again with the yellow now we're not making very much color for the white yellow um, or red so we don't need all that much icing, but right here I realized I added too much water. So I just added a little scoop of the, the rest of the icing that I have so that I can keep mixing it and get that nice, really like it's flowing off the spatula, but it's not too fast. It's a medium consistency. It is similar to like Elmer's glue. Now when you're mixing colors um, or consistencies of icing, there is often talking about other things that it could be like. So if we got a little bit more advanced and we were doing some very specific line work, I might say like, oh, you want something that's a toothpaste consistency. But here we want kind of like a, a liquid glue or even if thinking of like a slime where it's thick, but it can it can flow, you know? Next up, we are working on the brown. Now we are making hamburgers and steaks out of this brown. So we want it a richer brown. So I'm adding some more coloring. We don't need a lot because we're just using this for transfers. And then we're moving on to making a gray. So we're going light on the black food coloring for this because we are just looking to make gray to make like a great um, on our black base for our cookies, which you will see coming up. Again, you don't need a lot of this. I definitely made way too much, but the thing is, if you make way too much, then you can utilize it to make your black. So we're moving on to the black, and the black is the most challenging to do because you don't actually want it to look black here. You want it to look dark gray, and it'll dye, it'll dry black. And now we have all of our colors. We're gonna set up our workspace. I like to put down parchment paper, my turntable, my scribe, a paper towel, and then grab all of my colors, get my cookies. And then my next step is sit down and I want to cut the ends of my piping bags. So I flatten it out, cut straight across. I really should get different scissors for this because my kitchen scissors are a little serrated. And then I turn it 90 degrees and I, flatten it out again and I cut again. And this just makes sure that it is straight across so I have a very precise piping tip and I always test it, make sure it's big enough and I'm good to go. Just like with the fireworks set, the base cookie for every single one of these barbecue cookies is going to utilize black. So you're gonna outline it and then fill it in with your black royal icing. You can have it be on the thinner side, it will be totally fine. And you're just filling all of this in and then a little different from the firework set that PS uses all the same colors as the barbecue one. So you can do two cookie sets in one if you want to. 
you're going to even out your base. My black was a little thick here and I'm not happy about it, but we're moving on. So you're going to use the gray royal icing right here and you're going to create lines. Now I did two variations of this. I did one that was just straight across lines and you can do them closer together. Again, I was not having a good royal icing day. My consistencies just like weren't there and so I didn't feel like I could get these lines closer together. So you can just do straight lines or you can do a full on great checkerboardish look. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. You've seen a barbecue before. I'm betting you have, and that's the look you're wanting to go with. You don't have to worry about making it look perfect because you're going to be covering this. And then once you finish that up, you're gonna move on to your icing transfers. So what I'm doing here is I've pulled out a piece of parchment paper and I have a cookie next to this piece of parchment paper to just give myself an idea of how big my hamburger should be. So I'm using the brown and I'm just kind of squirting circle-ish shapes. I'm not being too concerned about it. And then I'm coming back with my scribe and I'm dipping it in a little bit of black royal icing that I've put on a paper towel. And then I'm just drawing lines across it. Now I'm moving on to the hot dogs. I'm taking the red and I'm doing oblong hot dog shapes. <laughs> oblong ovals. Is that what I'm trying to say here? And after I draw a few of those, I once again come in with my scribe and I'm dipping it in black. And this time I'm doing that like great across as well. And I made a lot of icing transfers. I figured I have all of this icing. I did not need all of this icing, but I have all of this icing. I am just gonna make as many as I want. And then I have a lot of variety when it comes to placing them on the cookie. And so what you're looking to do, you can see I did this all on the same sheet of parchment paper. Nothing needs to be on separate parchment papers or anything like that. But here I'm coming in with the scribe and I'm just very, very gently touching the top of my icing. Now, one thing you might find is that your icing is a little too thin and it's not keeping the shape very well. That's definitely something I experienced with the yellow because I wanted to do corn. That's, that's the idea here. So I'm just making some cornish shapes. Um, and so what I could have done is emptied all of this icing into a bowl and just added powdered sugar to it until it kept its shape a little bit more. But instead, because I was lazy, what I did is just made all my blobs. Once those dried a little bit, I came back and just did kind of dots on top to make it look a little bit more like corn on the cob. Um, you can do this. You can not be lazy and put it into, you know, empty all of your icing into a dish. <laughs> add powdered sugar, and then put it back in a piping bag and it's thicker and it'll hold its shape better. And you can see here, I am not being very precious about how my corn on the cob looks. And I also, as you see in this video, waited until it dried a little bit before I came back and added those extra layers. So here I am making some steaks. I put down some red and then I encircled that with a brown and then I'm using my scribe to kind of mush it all together to look like a steak. I did not feel like these were going to come out at all. And then in the end, I kind of liked them. So play around, there is no wrong way to do this. Once that is dry, overnight is best, but give it six to eight hours, you can kind of just peel it off the sheet. And that's what I'm doing here. I could have gotten a little flat top spatula and pushed all of these. I'm a hobby baker. I don't need to be that professional as long as my hands are clean. So I am grabbing all of the different transfers that I want to do on a cookie. And all of my cookies are a little different. So this one I decided corn, burgers, and hot dogs. I'm laying them out first so I could have an idea of where I want these transfers to be. And then I'm coming back with just any one of my royal icings. I chose red, putting a dab on the back and then placing it back on the cookie. And I repeat this for every single transfer. That's what, that's what these are called for the cookie because you are creating them on a different sheet somewhere else and you're transferring them to the cookie. 
I have done icing tramp transfers only one time before I made planes and they worked super well. Now I've only done, I've only used parchment paper as what I put the icing on, but I've heard you can also use, what is it, acetate paper and wax paper. So try that at home if you don't have parchment paper. Uh, and I'm sure you could also use silicone sheets as well. Let me know how your cookies decorated and what you enjoyed and what you didn't enjoy about this set. And be sure to tag Ice Kitchen on TikTok, Instagram, here on YouTube, even on Pinterest, or just email me because I want to see how you design your cookies. I'll see you next month.